good evening and welcome to the Sohegan Cooperative uh, Public Hearing tonight. It is January 16th. And can I have a motion to open the public hearing? I move to open the public hearing. I second it. Second. And um, I guess we'll vote, but we'll have to do a roll call with Sunny and we'll address her in just a moment. So, Mr. Bayou? Open. Dave, yes. Peters, yes. Grund, yes. We'll keep yes. Okay, thank you. And we have two members showing up of the snowy evening. We're giving them time to show up. And in fact, Swan's walking in. Um, All right. Sunny, I just need to check in with you and uh, ask two questions. One, was it uh, difficult for you to be here tonight? And are you alone? I have to move up to panels again. Oh, hold on. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, Sunny. Hi. Are you Can you guys hear me? Can so can can you answer? Uh, right. Was it difficult for you? To, and are you alone? It was difficult to be here, and I am alone. Thank you very much. Um, so we will get started um, with the public hearing. So I just want to say good evening and thank you for attending this week in cooperative school district public hearing for fiscal year 2025 budget. And I want to thank the staff at the SAU and administration at Sohegan High School for their efforts to help prepare the budget that will be presented tonight. I would also like to thank the Sohegan Advisory Finance Committee who dedicated many hours of reviewing the budget and having conversations with all of us to ensure their questions are answered. This year, the superintendent asked everyone to start with a zero-based budget and build the programs required to support students and ensure a full and rigorous curriculum. Preparing the budget includes many hours of work, discussions with staff, administration, school board members, and the Sohegan Advisory Finance Committee. And I would especially like to thank Dana Curran, Mike Berry, Steve Chamberlain, Galen Trembley, Amy Facey, and Katie Hannon for their guidance on the budget and the presentation preparation. So goals for the SAU include a focus on reading, where we want to ensure evidence and research-based practices are implemented. We want to capture and expand instruction time where we intend to utilize the full value of instructional time and look for ways to expand it. We are looking at our supervision and evaluation where we support the continued development of the supervision and evaluation model to ensure strong instruction practice and student engagement. We plan on building trust to do, do what we say we are going to do, and we are going to have evidence of achievement where we determine that accurately and authentically report school district achievement by using data wisely. The portrait of a graduate was developed to demonstrate the six key skills we know are highly desired by employers and are requisites for entrepreneurs. These skills are consistent with our mission statement to develop student agency and responsibility. Our goals, mission, statement, and portrait of a graduate are used as guideposts to develop our curriculum, student engagement, and school processes. On the next slide, the brief look at our student population at the high school. You can see that our school levels remain consistent. The 12th grade class is smaller, but the classes behind them are consistently stable or increasing. Enrollment for eighth grade class that will be attending Sohegan High School next year is 173. So we're seeing consistent class sizes in the upcoming year. In order to create our budget, we balance the student populations with the course offerings that students are requesting to ensure that we have the proper level of staffing of required courses. Reviewing our next slide, we are requesting an addition to professional staffing compared to the FY24 adopted budget. The difference between the adopted budget and actual budget staffing levels is the requirement, requirement of a full-time business teacher. The number of students requesting various business classes, including personal finance, entrepreneurship, advertising, and marketing has increased in the past two years. Also, due to new state regulations, all students must take a personal finance course beginning this year. The next slide is a review of our support staff. Our special education administrator at Sohegan High School has reviewed our processes and aligned the level of required special education teachers and paraprofessionals with the needs of our student population. And based on the new review of our coverage, we are able to reduce our special education staff by two FTEs. Also included on this slide are requests for a classroom assistant and a part-time learning commons math tutor. The classroom assistant position would work with students in non-credit-bearing SaberFlex classes and allow our professional staff to be fully engaged in the classroom teaching students. 
The math tutor works in the learning commons with students at all math levels. And this position is currently funded through our ESSER funds, which are no longer available to us after this year. As this position, as this position has been impactful for students, and the tutor is fully engaged, we would like to continue supporting this position in the budget. The next slide shows the trend of students and teachers over the past 13 years. The staffing level trends have been consistent with the student population. And on the next slide is a summary of items you will see included in our budget. In order to meet all learners, ensure our students are supported in meeting graduation requirements, and to meet our goals stated earlier, we are requesting the following new items that are reflected in the FY25 budget. We're looking for an additional one FTE business teacher, adding a one semester writing course for all ninth grade students, adding a classroom assistant position that will support Save or Flex, and add a math tutor position in the learning commons. So on to the budget. And I don't believe we have to actually read the board art. I do not. Okay. So <laughs> article two is our operating budget warrant article. And Steve, can you go to the next one, please? The FY25 operating budget we are proposing is $20,617,059, which is a $248,368, a 1.2 increase from the current year budget. The default budget calculation would be a decrease of $7,918 from the FY24 operating budget. We will walk through these differences later. The next slide shows the breakdown of the budget by category. Each of these categories is reviewed by the Sohegan Advisory Finance Committee and school board members to understand what is included in the cost and ensure that any changes are aligned to our mission. One item I will point out before I begin to discuss the changes in each of these categories is that we received a, surprise, a surprisingly high increase in our health care rate, 21.8%. Dental is an increase of 4.7%. This impacts our budget by $439,838. If we had not received this high of an increase, we believe our budget would be lower in FY25 than in FY24. These estimates are due to our experience in healthcare services and a general increase in cost by insurance companies. Now I'd like to highlight some of the changes in each of the categories. The transportation budget has an increase of $185,632, or 22% in FY25. The increases in transportation are due to a large increase in special education transportation services of 46%, or $184,429. This is a contract from last year where we received only one bid, and the rates are significantly, high, significantly higher than the prior provider. Also, there are additional students that would be transitioning from Amherst Middle School to Sohegan that will increase the special education transportation requirements. Areas that help to decrease transportation costs are related to regular busing and CTE transportation and athletics. Based on current work between the district and the bus company, Sohegan will be, will be reducing the number of buses budgeted for FY25 by one for a savings of $12,333. Also, because the school district purchased new vans a little over a year ago, we are able to provide our own transportation for students attending certain CTE programs by providing our own bus and using our own staff. In the past, we used the special education transportation provider. However, due to increased costs, we are able to save money by owning vans and using employees to drive our students. In curriculum, the focus on the curriculum budget is to provide a strong, rigorous education that engages all students. The administration at Sohegan High School has been working with the staff to refresh our course offerings to increase the rigor in the classroom and provide engaging lessons to our students. We are discussing ways to increase time in the classroom and hours of education. Education is not static, it's always changing. Our focus this year and next is to help each student become the best learner they can become and engage them in the classroom. Curriculum represents the largest percentage of the cost in the budget. There's an increase of $335,283 of 4% for the FY25 operating budget. And these increases include a $275,000 increase due to healthcare and dental costs are an increase of $6,976. $199,055 is an increase that represents the salaries and benefits for the business teacher, the classroom assistant, and the learning commons tutor. 
The school board supports these positions as it supports our goal and graduation requirements. These increases are offset by decreases in salaries by senior staff retiring and the hiring of lower salaried new teachers during the past year. This is an approximate 157,183 decrease of salaries and benefits. There's a $30,000 increase that's due to retirement payments per the agreement with the PPC. And this is based on what staff has informed us they plan to retire in the next year. There's a $23,700 decrease that relates to staff substitutes, which is an estimate based on prior history. And there's a $39,154 increase related to CTE or vocational education. We have a significant increase in number of students attending CTE programs where we pay the tuition to other students. The number of students increased from 11 the prior year to 33 this year. There's a $13,560 increase related to purchase of replacement textbooks for AP Chemistry, AP Calculus, French and Anatomy and Physiology. And these books are over 10 years old and in need of replacement. There's also an $8,950 increase related to purchase of classroom supplies. Science materials have increased in price, which has put other classroom materials in need of funding. These are consumable supplies that fund items like dissecting labs, chemistry, and physics supplies. In facilities, the facilities have increased $43,687 or 2.8% in FY25. Our director of facilities, Roger Preston, continues to manage our facilities and plan repairs with a focus on preventative maintenance. He has created a detailed five-year plan that focuses on known repairs or replacements. However, he has projected out facilities work for the, to the year 2040. Roger creates a budget that can be flexible should priorities need adjusted. The main drivers of increases in this area are $33,724 in healthcare cost increases, a little over $1,000 increase in dental costs, and a $5,130 increase in property and liability insurance. More will be discussed later when Article 4 School Maintenance Fund Warrant Article is presented. In technology, the budget has increased $36,034 or 8.3%. $13,317 increase is due to healthcare costs. $16,000 increase is due to increase in the cost of purchasing one on one computers and for replacement of teachers' computers. There's a net increase in the purchase of supplies and technology infrastructure of $8,280. And also included in technology is the purchase of 25 computers for the iMac lab. In FY24, we purchased 24 computers to replace the old, outdated computers in Lab 122. The net difference is almost zero, but I want to note that we're continuing to maintain our labs for our students. In athletics, the budget increased $34,929 or 4.4%. The increases include approximately $9,500 in dues and fees for activities. This is due to an increase in competitions. There's an $8,759 increase in interscholastic purchase services, $6,000 in athletic equipment replacement, and a $4,596 increase in interscholastic coaching stipends. In food service, there's an increase of $11,609 or 2.3%. And the main drivers are a $7,792 increase in healthcare costs and a $2,549 increase in software. And this is the result of software NutriKids being sunsetted and the district moving to a cloud-based service. Food service strives to break even to eliminate or reduce taxpayer impact through food sales. The kitchen manager and director of food service have done a great job managing controllable costs in this area. In administration, there is a decrease of $108,181 or 3.4%. And the main drivers are a combination of increases and decreases. So there's a $20,830 increase in healthcare costs. There's a $6,000 pool for administrative salary increases and a $6,000 pool for secretarial salary increases. There's also a $1,500 increase in bank fees as most of our payments are now online and the use of credit cards has increased these costs. In decreases, there's a $35,049 decrease in the guidance department salaries, an $18,342 decrease in Medicaid billing services related to student services, 
There's a $13,000 decrease in special education legal services an $11,000 decrease in administrative salaries due to the hiring of a new principal and interim dean of faculty. We are excited by the changes and the focus on supporting all students by many hires this year. We welcome Dana Curran as the new principal of Suhegan High School, Elizabeth Charbonneau as the interim dean of faculty, Tim Cattro as the new director of guidance and many other administrators and staff that joined our community this year. One of the largest drivers of the decrease in administrative category is a decrease in the SAU assessment of $55,361. This decrease is due to work done by the new superintendent, Mike Berry, aligning the needs of the district with personnel. The SAU budget was approved at the public hearing in November, and let me take a few minute, moments to explain the SAU assessment. The SAU budget was an increase of $42,353 or 1.4%. The changes to this budget include eliminating the second assistant superintendent position, but creating a director of curriculum and accountability position. The net effect is minimal to the overall budget, but aligns the focus of the work with the needs of the school districts within the SAU. It eliminates, eliminates the assistant director of student services position. It eliminates the 0.5 FTE administrative assistant for student services but it increases the data analyst from a 0.7 to a 1 FTE. It adds a 0.35 FTE communication position and the increase of healthcare costs, maintenance of the brick school, and a 3% salary pool are, are in also in this budget. All these changes have been made to align the needs of the school to support students while achieving the SAU goals I stated earlier. There is a decrease in the SAU assessment charged to Sohegan Cooperative School District due to a decrease in the apportionment calculated from 32.23% in FY24 to 31.03% in FY25 of the total SAU budget. And because of the support received from the SAU Office for Curriculum, Finance, Special Education Programs, Building and Grounds, and Hiring and Contract Work, we are able to focus on the business of educating our students. In the last category, student services, the budget has decreased $290,625 or 6.1%. This budget is built by reviewing our student population that have IEP and 504 plans every year. These are plans that define what supports and services the students will receive through the year. The special education budget is built on these requirements and develops how many special education teachers, paraprofessionals, nurses, and other support staff might be needed as well as the required occupational, physical, and speech therapies. There's a $152,575 decrease in this area due to the number of special education staff needed. The level of staffing is based on student population that requires support services. There's a $115,481 decrease that's due to other support services. A $97,121 reduction in the one FTE speech therapist. There is a $79,165 decrease uh, due to special education out of district services that are needed. There is a $15,144 decrease in cost needed for transition services and a $14,000 reduction in need for other out of district services needed for students. Offsetting increases are 132,428 increase in special education out of district tuition residential costs and an $87,000 increase in healthcare costs. On the next slide, we're going to discuss the default budget calculation. This is where you take the prior year budget, remove one time costs, and add in contractual requirements. As you can see, we start with the FY24 budget of $20,683,691, which includes all FY24 warrant articles. We remove the special warrant articles that passed of $220,000 for the school maintenance expendable trust, $70,000 for the turf field replacement, and $25,000 for the technology fund. And we start with the budget of $20,368,691. We add the salaries employer-based benefits for regular education of $202,362. We add in special education transportation service requirements of $184,429. And we do decrease the SAU assessment 
of $53,410 to reflect the actual cost of the contractual obligation. We decreased the special education service requirements of $319,856. And there is a net all other change category that it reflects many small increases and decreases along with one time costs. The total decrease to the FY24 budget to calculate the default budget is $7,918. The FY24 default budget calculation is $20,360,773. The next slide shows what we call at-risk items or items that we may not be able to support if we have a default budget. These items include supporting the full-time business teacher, which is needed to support new state graduation requirements and an increase in the interest in various business classes. Supporting the teachers by ensuring they're engaged in the classroom and adding a classroom assistant to oversee the non-credit bearing Saber Flex classes. Supporting our students by providing the math tutor and the learning commons that works with all students who come in for math support. Supporting our students by ensuring that we can pay the tuition for the CTE programs they are engaged in as an education pathway. Also, we would work with our technology staff to support the computer lab with older equipment. On the next slide, we break out salaries and benefits from other costs in each of the budget categories. As you can see, 73.7% of all costs are salaries and benefits. Each other category makes up less than 5% of the budget, other than student services, which is around 6.4%. So I've spent quite a bit of time on the expense side of the budget. I'd like to take a few minutes to discuss revenue. So on this chart, you can see the estimated revenue for food service grants, other federal, state, local revenue, and our estimated fund balance. Food services grants and other are estimated to be no change or small increases, but the significant change is in the estimated fund balance. The estimated fund balance includes unused expenses and any revenues received. These revenues can be unpredictable and we do not currently know what excess revenues we may receive. We broke out the fund balance summary by how we predict we will use the balance. In FY24, the taxpayers voted for warrant articles to fund the turf field, maintenance fund, and technology fund. And this year, we will be asking for each of these articles again, as well as a new vehicle fund. These articles will be discussed later this evening, and the remaining fund balance will be used to offset the tax rate for FY25. The next chart shows our projected tax effort. The projected tax effort is calculated by taking the budgeted appropriations and offset it by the estimated revenue. Then you decrease your appropriations by the estimated revenue for the statewide property tax and the estimated amount to be received by the state for adequacy aid. As you can see on the chart, there's an estimated increase in the tax effort of $853,794. Approximately 419,889 of the increase is due to less estimated revenue to be received, and $438,368 is due to an increase in the requested budget appropriations. Please keep in mind that I use the word estimates, as this is what revenue is. We don't know exactly what we are receiving until money is calculated and sent by the Department of Revenue and the DOE, as well as knowing the amount of grants to be received for education and special services. And on the next slide, we project the tax rate impact for the projected tax effort. We start with the estimated tax effort and split it between the town of Amherst and the town of Mount Vernon based on ADM or average daily membership. Using the valuation by town, we can calculate the tax rate impact of 26 cents for the town of Amherst and 69 cents for the town of Mount Vernon. So that is what we have. Um, we, we're going to wait till the very end to hear from Sohegan Finance Committee. And Jeannie is online, but she's going to just comment at the end since the committee has not met to actually vote on each of these articles. She just wants to make a general statement over the overall process. But we can take questions from the public. And so we have one person, and she said she has nothing to add. Is there anyone online who has any questions? If you can raise your hand, if you have a question, would like to speak. I don't. 
no, the anyone who will. Okay. So um, I will need a motion to approve Article Two operating budget. So moved. Second, second. Uh, we will have to do a roll call vote since we have Sunny online. So, Mr. Glover. Glover, yes. Liz Zimmerman, yes. Bay, yes. Peter, yes. Rand, yes. Yes. And Sunny. Sunny. Sorry, Sunny Daniels, yes. Great. And then we also need a motion to move Article Two operating budget to the deliberative session. Second, second. Glover, yes. Liz Zimmerman, yes. Bay, yes. Peter, yes. Rand, yes. Keep, yes. And Sunny? Dan Sunny Daniels, yes. Thank you. Um, so moving on, Article 3 will be presented by Ms. Peters. Hello. Uh, thank you. Uh, I am proud to be part of the Sahegan community serving on the PPC. Our PPC group is formed of the professional and support staff at Sahegan High School. They are not a unionized group, but represent themselves in our policy formation, which covers their compensation and work environment. We meet regularly during the school year to ensure communications are ongoing, and we can address any concerns or support any programs as quickly as possible. We have reached a new three-year agreement with the PPC committee. Our priorities are to increase instructional time, ensure the compensation and working conditions would continue to attract and retain professional and support staff, and review the cost of the current salary schedule and health insurance offerings. On the next slide, you can see the highlights of the new policy agreement. Here it is. All right. We are increasing the number of instructional days by four and adding one professional development day. We are maintaining a competitive compensation level through a modest salary increase of 3.3%, and adding 0.54% to the professional staff individual retirement account and 0.27% amount to the support staff individual retirement account. This will support the additional days as well as keep our salaries competitive with the surrounding towns. We have removed the stipend for carrying four different classes that was in the prior agreement. We restructured the career growth program to eliminate the indefinite growth on, of the salary schedule. This means that current salary schedule will cap the lanes and the salary schedule will no longer grow indefinitely. The most costly healthcare plan, the HMO plan, will be sunsetted for new employees. For those current employees who choose to continue on the HMO plan, they will be picking up a larger share of the premium. For a single person plan, the district will be paying 85% in the first year of the contract, 83% in the second year, and 80% in the third year. This is down from 90% the district paid this year. For a two-person or family plan, the district will be paying 75% in the first year of the contract, 74% in the second year, and 73% in the third year. This is down from the current 77% the district paid this year. One other item connected to compensation that was changed is that the retiring staff who meet the years of service criteria of 15 years will receive an increase in the honorarium that is already in the contract. The increase will be $4,000 for professional staff and $2,000 for support staff. Other changes to policy other than compensation include flexibility in advancing new staff on the compensation schedule. This gives the superintendent the ability to advance a candidate on a state-determined critical shortage area up to three steps. This will help ensure that we are able to hire the best candidate. Create a classroom assistant and tutor role as discussed in the budget and change the retirement notice timeline from January 1 to November 1 of the year preceding their final year. This date will help develop the budget. The cost of the warrant will be 438838 for fiscal year 2025, which is a, point, a 15 cent tax impact for Amherst and a 21 cent impact for Mount Vernon. For fiscal year 2026, it will be $432,555 for fiscal year 2027, $439,305. Okay, thank you. Um, so again, we'll hold off for so we can finance committee, but I uh, would like to find out if there are any questions from the public. Yeah. Please come forward, introduce yourself and state the name of the town you live in. <clears throat> Laura Taylor, Amherst, New Hampshire. 
the PPC, like the last time the PPC agreement was calculated, there were each teacher had four classes and that's full time. Well, well, they teach four and then five. So it's like a four, like four one semester, five another semester. Okay. Since then, we've had schedule changes where we've gone literally from what eventually used to be six classes in a day, and now it's eight classes per day for the number of classes we offer. And I'm wondering, does the PPC agreement reflect that change? to support our current schedule that the administration and the board decided on. Is your question that they support the eight periods in the day or? It's teaching load. The, yeah, the, the teacher, teaching, the teaching load, load yeah, stays is, the same. Is that adjusted at all to be similar? Like you're trying to be competitive with other districts, but other districts don't stop at four classes per teacher. Each yeah, each district does their own thing, but we have we have an agreement with them that we teach that they're still going to teach the four at one semester five another plus advisory. We did make some adjustments though, as far as there were if and, and you can probably summarize it better than I do, but it used to have caps on number of students, a number of time, and if there were unique. You know, Crash. extra periods for unique and and maybe Christy, you can probably explain this more eloquently than I have, but a lot of those have been removed. So those incentives, those those extra premiums are gone, but the uh, ratio of classes to prep times is still the same. Thank you very and much. I, and I will say primarily this as I understand, I was on my end, I was not part of the negotiating committee, but as you know, I know one of our concerns when we talked about it as a group and then as they went forward was we want our teachers teaching at a very high level and we want them to have the time to prepare, collaborate, and, collaborate and, and really perform at a really high level. And they've been told that. They've been told that that's the expectation, that they're keeping this time, but we do expect to make sure that that's what's happening. Um, and instead of taking away time and potentially... Okay, I, I just wanted their time to be utilized well and their balance and yep. that their contract reflects the changes we've made in our mm -hmm. yep. curriculum. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, are there any questions from anyone online? There's there's really one person. Let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah, if anyone has any questions that are online, please raise your hand. But they know who's on there, so I don't see that. Okay. All right. So um, again, we'll need to motion to approve Article Three for the PPC warrant. Thank you, John. So Mr. Bayou, second. Second. Ms. Peters, second. Uh, roll call vote. Laura, yes. Gale Zimmerman, yes. Bayou, yes. Peter, yes. Brian, yes. O'Keefe, yes. And Sunny? Daniels, yes. Right. And then we need a motion to move Article 3 operating budget to deliberative session. Okay. So moved. Mr. Bayou, second. Ms. Peters. And roll call vote. Laura, yes. Gale Zimmerman, yes. Bayou, yes. Peter, yes. Brian, yes. O'Keefe, yes. And Daniels, Sunny. yes. Perfect. Daniels, yes. Sorry. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, so moving on to the next warrant article is the school maintenance fund warrant article, and that's going to be presented by Mr. Glover. Yes. Um, so we have school maintenance and three other um, reserve funds. This is the continuation of the of a view towards planning properly for the future. Um, this was something that was brought up by Sabigan Advisory Finance um, several years ago, looking for um, planning for foreseeable needs. And so these next four foreign articles serve that purpose. Um, the school maintenance fund, it currently has a balance of $526,000. We're looking to add $365,000 to that. That is based on the capital needs assessment, as well as the um, facilities department's observations and um, what equipment is at the end of life and what may be nearing the end of life. Um, 
including the uh, skylight replacements, um, which were uh, needed because of uh, water intrusion. This slide here um, shows, um, you know, year over year, what we foresee we might do at this time. Of course, that's subject to change based on when things actually fail, when uh, facilities can actually extend the life of things, which they've done a great job doing. And that is the facilities. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions from the public? No, any questions anyone online? If you have any questions and you're online, please raise your hand. We'll recognize you. Don't see anyone raising their hand, so we will move on to a motion to approve Article 4, the school maintenance. Uh, can I have the correct wording of that so I do it? Yeah. <laughs> School maintenance <laughs> fund. Right yes, way. thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, motion to uh, approve Article Four of the school maintenance fund. Second. Second. Roll call vote. Robert, yes. Elias Zimmerman, yes. 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 Peter Jen. Grand, yes. We'll keep yes. And Miss Daniels. Daniels, yes. Thank you. And a motion to to move Article Four, the school maintenance fund to the deliberative session. Second. Lover, yes. Delays are yes. 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 Peter, yes. Fred, yes. Keith, yes. And Sunny? Daniels, yes. Thank you. Moving on to the next warrant article. The turf field replacement. So Hello. this next warrant article, this is uh, year three of five-year plan. To um, to raise the funds to uh, replace Archer Field when the time is needed. Um, currently, the fund has three hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars in it. We're looking to add seventy thousand dollars again this year, which has been consistent with prior years. Um, luckily for us, the the turf field is in pretty good condition and may may extend a few more years than was um, anticipated by the manufacturer, and that would be great. That is it for the third field. Perfect. Uh, any questions from the public? No? Anybody online, if you have a question, please raise your hand and we will promote you to panelists to speak. Don't see anyone raising their hand. So we will go ahead and I will ask for a motion to approve warrant article five the turf field replacement part. Second. And roll call votes. Glover, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. You, yes. Peters, yes. Don, yes. O'Keefe, yes. And Sunny? Daniels, yes. And a motion to move Article 5, the turf field replacement warrant article to deliberative session. So. Second. And Mr. Glover, roll call vote. Glover, yes. Delays number many, yes. Three, yes. Peter, yes. Friend, yes. Keith, yes. And Sunny. Daniels, yes. Thank you. And the next warrant article. Yeah, the technology fund warrant article. This was uh, started last year, I believe the first year, has a balance of $25,000, looking to increase that to fifty uh, plus $50,000 um, to support our foreseeable technology needs, um, in particular, uh, some uh, switching equipment, I believe it's going to be at its end of life very soon. That's quite expensive stuff. Um, this is a um, three-year plan that has been uh, developed by our technology department and consistent with the other plans. It's grounded in observations and real conditions uh, so that we can stay where we need to be on the technology front. And that is it for the technology form. Okay. Um, any questions from the public? Nothing here. Anyone online? If you have any questions, please raise your hand. Don't see anyone raising their hand. So I will ask for a motion to approve Article 6, the Technology Warrant Fund Article. 
So moved. Second. Roll we'll call vote, Mr. Glover. Glover, yes. Is there a man, yes? I just want to say that I think this, you know, having one consistent moving, seconding makes the minutes very easy. <laughs> Peter, yes. Peter, yes. Gun, yes. Keith, yes. Sunny. Daniels, yes. And a motion to move Article 6, Technology Warrant Article, to deliberative session. Second. And Mr. Glover, roll call vote. Glover, yes. Lisa Merman, yes. Say yes. Peter, yes. Gun, yes. Keith, yes. And Sunny. Daniels, yes. Thank you. And we have one more Warren article. Here we go, the vehicle fund warrant article. Um, this is a new fund this year, um, seeding it with $20,000. Um, it's probably the most exciting fund that we have because putting money into this saves us a lot more money in the future. Uh, we've already realized significant savings by um, having our two passenger vans and, and um, to get uh, people, students from place to place, as opposed to hiring buses, chartering buses to do that, to, to massive savings. Um, so the more that we can develop that program, uh, we will realize significant savings to taxpayers and serve our students at the same time. So um, this one is, is quite exciting and it allows us to um, purchase new vehicles as well as for major repairs should they be necessary. Um, I believe that the intent would be for minor repairs to come out of operating budget. Thank you. Questions for the public? No? Anybody online? If you have any questions, please raise your hand. I don't see anyone raising their hand. All right, so we will um, entertain a motion to approve Article 7, the Vehicle Fund Warrant Article. So moved. Second. Glover, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, yes. Hey, yes. Peters, yes. Brand, yes. O'Keefe, yes. And Sunny? Daniels, yes. Thank you. And a uh, motion to move Article 7, Vehicle Fund Warrant Article to the yes. session. So moved. Second. All right, we'll call vote. Glover, yes. Melissa Merman, yes. See you, yes. Peter, yes. Run, yes. O'Keefe, yes. And Sunny? Daniels, yes. All right, thank you very much. So if we go back to the presentation, I think there's a summary at the end. Okay. Oh, this is what, yes. So he can advise refinance committee. Um, Jeannie? I'd like to promote you to panelists so you can give us a, uh, a an input from so he can finance committee and let us know where you stand. There she is. Jeannie, are you with us? I don't know. She's not, she's showing up. Oh, oh. There she is. The slow connection. Is Jeannie, are you there yet? Ginger. Yeah, are you muted? Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Yes. Great. Thank you. Sorry that was so slow. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I um, just wanted to make a few remarks um, on behalf of the Finance Committee. Um, we had planned to vote this evening after the board's public hearing on each of the Warren articles, but we're unable to assemble a quorum because of the weather and other events that ended up creating conflicts for some. Um, just to let everyone know, we have postponed um, our portion of the public hearing um, in which we will take a vote on the Warren articles to Thursday, January 25th at 7 p.m. Um, I just wanted to say as chair of the uh, finance committee, uh, I just wanted to acknowledge the good work of all our committee members um, in examining the detail, um, in detail, the proposed budget to enable the taxpayers of Amherst and Mount Vernon to feel confident that all costs are reasonable and justified. <clears throat> Each advisory finance committee, just to let people know what the process is, um, they were paired with members of the Sahigan board to meet with those associated with each function and to further scrutinize in detail their particular portion of the budget. 
Uh, reports were prepared, presented, and posted. We met throughout the year with um, Amy Facey, the business administrator, and with the representatives of the school board <clears throat> to make sure that all of our questions were answered. Uh, we also uh, were given time at each board meeting to comment. And um, before we even started the process, uh, we took a tour of Sahigan just so everyone would be familiar with the facility. Um, and although I, I really cannot yet speak to the exact level of support um, of the um, Sahigan Advisory Finance Committee, I can say that we found the 1.2% increase to the budget to be minimal, reasonable, and well justified. Uh, the PPC agreement was thoroughly explained and it too seemed like a well-crafted compromise. And as per past years, it appears that any additional warrant articles being proposed are being funded with the unassigned fund balance and do not place any additional burden on the taxpayers. Um, and so we'll be back with you um, next Thursday with our vote so that you can officially enter that um, onto the record. Great, thank you so much, Jeannie. We appreciate it. We appreciate all the work that all the members from the Finance Committee put in this year. Sure. Okay, great. And there's, like I said, there's a summary slide. I just want to go over very quickly. And I think we're... Should we get back to the Teddy, sorry. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Um, so in summary, we are requesting funds for the FY25 operating budget of $20,617,059, or it's a 1.2% increase from FY24. We are requesting $439,868 for the PPC agreement in FY25, $365,000 for capital maintenance trust funds, the $70,000 for the turf field maintenance fund, 50,000 for the technology fund and 20,000 for the vehicle fund. Other than the PPC agreement, the two maintenance funds and the technology and vehicle fund would come from the unassigned fund balance and we are not requesting additional money raised from taxation. So just to be clear, the PPC agreement is the only warrant article that is, we are asking for additional taxation. Other than the operating budget. Other than the operating budget. Thank you very much. We'll clarify that as well. <laughs> the, the other funds are coming from unassigned fund balance, and we are not requesting additional money to be raised for from taxation for those. Um, so that is what we have for the public hearing. And any last minute public comments? Any online last minute public comments? not see any so we can close the public hearing as well we have a motion to public close the public hearing a move and a second and a second so roll call vote Lori, yes Billy Zimmerman yes Bay, yes Peters yes Ron yes Keith yes and Sunny Daniels yes we are done for the evening thank you very much and if